I'm Sara Alvarez with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. I'm Jeff Motes with the Florida Public Archaeology Network, the West Central region. And today we're here at New Preserve to learn a little bit more about Native American history here in Manatee County. Neal Preserve is located on Perico Island and contains 120 acres of coastal habitats such as mangrove forests and salt turns. The preserve features parking, a pavilion, boardwalks, and shell-lined trails made only for pedestrians. I asked Jeff, who were the early people of Florida in this area? So the question, who were the Native American tribes, Native Americans who lived here, um, is, a, is a question that we, we get a lot, that archeologists get a lot, and I think you guys as well probably get a lot. Um, and it's a, not an easy question to answer because the history of Native American life in Florida stretches for so long. It stretches 10,000 years old, uh, 10,000, 12,000 years ago. Not all of that history and archeology span is represented here at Neal Preserve, um, but there's a good chunk of it. And what we know about the Native Americans and who they were um, comes from a lot of the information that was shared with the early explorers. And those Spanish explorers wrote it down in their notes and that's where, how we get a lot of the names. But before we get into that, you know, I'd like, to, I'd like to, to acknowledge, provide a land acknowledgement and give kind of an acknowledgement that, you know, we're on um, property that was utilized and worked and inhabited um, by all sorts of peoples from uh, the people that are still here today, the Seminole tribe. Um, and then some of those early names, some of those names that we do know, um, that the Native Americans may have called themselves or called their groups, like the Tokobaga. This is the land of the Tokobaga, and those were a, a tribe or a group of Native Americans that lived here in Tampa Bay area. Um, also, the Calusa is a, a common name that when we refer to Native Americans, we can refer to that name as people who lived up and down the coast, primarily in southwest Florida, a little further south from here. Um, but those are usually the names that when we get ask this question, who were these people? Um, they're still here among us. They're the Seminole tribe. Uh, they're the Tokobaga people. Um, they're the Calusa people. Um, and they represent a, a long stretch of humanity in this area that dates well into um, the late kind of Pleistocene, 10, 12, 13, 14,000 years ago even. Besides living and thriving uh, in this estuary setting and along the Gulf Coast of Florida, um, the particular time period that's represented here at Neal Preserve and the archeological remains, um, the people who lived here were engaged in everyday activities um, like, you know, uh, harvesting resources from the estuary, uh, all the nearshore fish and oyster and, and other shellfish and various types of shellfish to provide sustenance for their lives. Um, but they were also engaged in uh, a, a really extensive trade network where materials um, that were being produced by other Native Americans, other Floridians at the time, um, were just really being passed up and down the coast from stone tools and raw materials and stone, um, as well as uh, refined pottery and uh, different aspects and different types of pottery um, that were being made on a daily basis, um, were really being passed, not just locally, but regionally and even further afield than that. A lot of materials from this particular time period from the Florida Gulf Coast end up in places today that we call Michigan and Ohio. And same thing for raw materials that uh, are endemic or, or native to those, those regions um, end up uh, in places like this, shell middens and, and other contexts in archeological sites in Florida. So there was this um, really large scale communication network, uh, not just materials, but ideas that were being passed 
along with those materials and as the people kind of traveled extensively throughout uh, Southeast United States, throughout this continent really. Um, so they were known for all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, so what evidence do we have um, of their history, of their archeology? span We're standing on it here. Um, this is remnants of everyday lives of the people who were here at any given point in time. And I think that's important to kind of point out at this point is that the archeological remains, the remains that are on the ground that make up um, the, the shell midden here are not from a single point in time or really even a, a single village. Um, this is an accumulation of, of daily refuse, food remains, um, tool making and tool remains, and just kind of all of those everyday activities that are built on top of each other. So all the refuse, all the things that are cast off end up in these shell middens. Um, and they're different from where we throw our trash today in big trash dumps. These are living surfaces. This is where people conducted um, pretty much all the activities of their daily lives. So it's where they built their houses, it's where they built their shelter, it's where they cooked their meals, it's where they reared their children, it's where all of those activities um, are really accumulated in this particular, in the, in the remnants that we call a shell midden. Um, this was their living surface. This is what they lived on and, uh, and acted out their everyday activities. As you explore the preserves trails, imagine living among the Tokobaga and Calusa people. Keep your eyes wide open for the nature that surrounds you. Look down to the ground and you might find some cacti, which can be cooked and eaten. Look around and you could see upland cotton, which could be harvested by early people to make textiles. Or look up and you could see a gumbo limbo tree whose leaves and bark have medicinal uses for Native Americans. Okay, so a question that we get quite often is what is a mound um, and what are, what is it, are their significance? Um, we're here at the interpretive signs here at Neal Preserve that talk about the site um, from an archeological perspective uh, where the early archeologists, the first archeologists to come out here and, and do some excavations provided a nice survey and a schematic of the Preco Island site. Um, that the remnants are still out here at Neal Preserve. And there's, there's um, mounds, archeological mounds that are made up over time just through daily use and, and uh, um, um, getting rid of all of those kind of implements and that refuse from daily activities. And those we like to call the midden mounds or, or those are specific to uh, where families and villages and, and groups of people were living over an extended period of time. Then there's other type of mounds that were built for a specific purpose. And those could be um, here along the Gulf Coast, we have a lot of evidence of flat top temple mounds um, that were late in the pre-Columbian time periods. As far as kind of timing is concerned, they were built relatively um, late in the, the big scheme of things. Um, we also have burial mounds that were constructed, you know, for the purpose of um, um, putting people to rest. You can enjoy a better view of the burial mound and the whole preserve by climbing to the top of the observation tower. The observation tower is a great place to spot wildlife such as birds. It's easy to see why Native Americans chose to live in such a bountiful environment.
Parika Preserve also features several ponds, birdhouses, and even a kayak lounge. On your next visit, make sure to keep an eye out for interesting plants, wildflowers, and small wildlife, like this little musk turtle. Thank you for tuning in today to Explorers Academy. For more videos and content, you can go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page at Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. Thank you, thank you for having me. Make sure you come out and enjoy these places. These are wonderful places in Manatee County. And remember, always be respectful of wherever you explore.